The Islanders youngsters were in fine form in their resounding win over New Jersey on Thursday night. And one of the almost youngsters, Dwayne Rollison, was equally superb. Tonight, it's the Islanders and Canadians up next. We missed a white Christmas by one day, but for the second straight year, it's a blizzard on the night the Canadians play at the Coliseum. Franz Nielsen has five goals this season for the Islanders. Three have come shorthanded. He is now tied for the league lead in that department. Good evening, Islanders fans. Welcome to New York Islanders hockey here on MSG+. Plus. Tonight, the Islanders host the Northeast leading Montreal Canadiens. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rob Carlin. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. We hope you had a happy holiday. I know the Islanders certainly did. They've won three of their last four games, earning seven of a possible eight points in that stretch. And with a win Thursday night in New Jersey, they climbed over the Devils and out of the cellar in the Eastern Conference. The Devils are also in action tonight despite the weather. The Devils have lost nine of their last ten, hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs, have lost five of their last seven. You can see that over on MSG tonight. Meanwhile, the Islanders go into this game riding a high and feeling very confident with their recent play. Let's go upstairs now to the guys who braved the weather and got to their booth, Howie Rose and Butch Gordon. All right, Rob, thank you very much, and thank you for joining us. I hope you're safe and warm and can just uh, relax and watch a couple hours of hockey here. It's going to be kind of a surreal night because there are a bunch of Montreal Canadiens fans <laughs> who have basically annexed this building, Butch. And we've made them feel very comfortable yeah. with, the, with the blizzard out there. There. Yeah, that's right. As usual, <laughs> blame Canada, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, one guy the Islanders aren't blaming for anything is Josh Bailey. He was just phenomenal in the Islanders' victory over the New Jersey Devils on Thursday night at the Rock in New Jersey. And it really appears that going down to Bridgeport for those 10 games turned out to be a real tonic. Well, it sure has. It may be cold outside, but this guy has been very, very hot. I mean, talk about trying to find a small dose of confidence. He's found a large dose of confidence. He's gone back to using his natural instincts, his anticipation, and his ability just to stay in front of that and do battle, all of these things in the American Hockey League. But what I like most about Josh Bailey is his skating, its return, watching him push, driving, going to the net, finding a way to get it in. Well, he didn't quite succeed there, but he's back. He's ready for the National Hockey League. I look for a big second half from him. So he had plenty of jump on Thursday night. So did the Islanders against the New Jersey Devils. And as Rob said, Islanders come into this game on a bit of a roll now. They've won three out of four, picking up seven points out of a possible eight during that time. And tonight they'll see a Montreal Canadiens team that came in hoping that Carey Price would be their goaltender. You hear all the Canadiens fans here now as they hit the ice. A lot of that has to do with a snowstorm, of course. But it's been a storm of saves all year for Mr. Price. Well, you talk about a guy that now has confidence. Boy, he didn't have it at the start of the season, but he's found it. Number one in goals for or goals wins for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. 2.2 goals against average. Better than uh, half a point on his goals against average. And his save percentage has been fabulous at 9.25. So he's given the kind of goaltender the Montreal Canadiens need, Howie. If they're going to succeed in the regular season and find themselves in the playoffs, because it's a pretty play standing when you yeah, talk really, about it. really is, but you look where, look where the Canadians are. They're third by virtue of leading their division. Look at the eighth seed, though, and how close they are to being in very, very perilous condition. Just two points ahead of the Boston Bruins, so you can fall pretty quickly. Tonight, it's the Islanders and the Montreal Canadiens for the third of four meetings this year. The Canadiens took back-to-back -back games in late October from the Islanders, including this bruising game in Montreal. The opening face-off on a snowy island is next. Nissan's year-end event is almost over. Through January 3rd, get special holiday offers on every stylish, fuel-efficient, and quality Nissan. Now, lease Altima, just $199, plus $500 bonus cash. Or lease Rogue, also just $199. Visit ChooseNissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer today. Hurry, event ends January 3rd.
on New Year's Day, the rivalry continues. Live from Heinz Field, Ovechkin and the Capitals, Crosby and the Penguins, the Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic, only on NBC. That one, Daddy. It's beautiful. I'm the world's greatest Douglas fir. I'm the perfect shape. I'm the perfect color. My scent, like making love to a lumberjack. But halfway home, my twine gets loose. <laughs> and your cut rate insurance might not pay for this. So get all state, where you can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. My son only wanted one toy this year. I want a Robo-Son 4000. The one no one could get. Toy stores are reporting long lines and empty shelves. A Robo-Son 4000. And I mean no one. So I did most of my holiday shopping on City Specials. With the money I saved, I bid online and got exactly what he wanted. Robo-Son Introducing the new Robo-Son 5000. At least for now. Make your happy holiday stories come true with City Specials. What's your story? City can help you write it. This holiday season, Chevy's giving you more, like a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain warranty and our best offers of the year, like 0% APR financing for qualified buyers, plus $1,500 holiday allowance, plus no monthly payments until spring on most Chevy models. But hurry, our best offer of the season ends soon. And right now, qualified lessees can get a low-mileage lease on this 2011 Traverse LS for around $289 a month. Call for details. See your local Chevy dealer. It was quite a scene outside Nassau Coliseum, a blizzard hitting Long Island. The Islanders actually petitioned the NHL to see if they could postpone this game with the Canadians. But since Montreal had already flown into New York, the league told the teams they play. So we get ready for the opening faceoff. Rob Carlin back here on Islanders Hockey here on MSG. The Islanders are looking for their third straight win, which would match a season high. Let's take a look now at the line combinations tonight. The Islanders once again playing a man short on forwards tonight as Trevor Gillies gets the healthy scratch. Matt Martin back in the lineup. Bruno Gervais will move around on the Islanders defense as they play seven defensemen. As for the Canadiens, they are in first place in the Northeast Division. Brian Gianta, only the second American to be named Canadian's captain. Only Chris Chelios did that as well. And here's the goaltending matchup tonight. Carey Price in net for the Habitant against Dwayne Rollison for the Islanders. Let's go upstairs now to Howie Bush. All right, thank you very much, Rob. And the Islanders thrilled to have Matt Molson in the lineup tonight because there were concerns he might have suffered a concussion after that hit by Anton Volchenkov in New Jersey on Thursday night, but gladly he did not. Well, obviously, everybody's happy to have Matty back. And you're right, he did take a pretty good blow to the head, but the Islanders did the right thing, uh, rested him the rest of the game, particularly when they had that nice big lead and built on it. But uh, leading goal scorer for the New York Islanders, you've got to have him. You're going to win hockey games. Scott Gomez, number 11, starting out up front for Montreal with Brian Gianta, number 21, and Max Pacioretty, number 67. This is Pacioretty moving in on the left wing against Wisniewski, who stick to flex that puck out of play. There's my whole Jacques Demours. I shouldn't say old. I mean, that is a reference. Like, excuse me, Jacques Pontan. Doing another terrific job. You know, and this guy's always had such a lot of success. And, and the last time I talked to him about his hockey club, he just gained so much experience last year going to the finals there at the conference. And really expects big things from his team. And so far, they've been playing very, very well. Spot check had a shot block. Mark Eaton shovels it to the boards. Gianta. Got it to the front of the net, and now the Islanders come to center. Molson for Tavares in on the right wing. Tavares against Roman Hamerlick, the former Islander, number 44. Nice feed, and the shot by Hamannick went wide. He was looking for a friendly stick. Gets it again, but can't keep the pass from McDonald. And the teams begin to change on the move. This is Hamerlick in the Montreal zone. And now Thomas Placanitz, number 14, hassled by Nielsen, who forces the turnover, feeds high to the slot, didn't reach Bailey, and brought ahead by Kostichin. Andre Kostichin, number 46, failed to hold on. And Hamannick for the Islanders. Outlets to Nielsen. Bronze up to Grabner. He couldn't get hold of the puck in time to get that first quick step, or else he might have been in alone. Well, sometimes you wonder if the guys have their legs. It takes them two or three shifts. Franz Nielsen has already found his, and we've seen 
as this season progresses, what a terrific skater he is. You talk about needing to find your legs. The Islanders, Canadians, everybody else in the league were off skates for two days. Doesn't sound like much to most of us, but to players who are used to skating virtually every day, two days off skates is an adjustment, huh? Oh, it, it really is. I mean, you know, you, you have uh, something to eat, obviously. They're having turkey in their regular uh, food diet. And, of course, you know, I'm sure they had the odd beverage just to celebrate a little bit, but nothing too dramatic. But, uh, you know, they probably worked out a little bit, Howie, but you're right. I mean, it's going to take them two or three uh, shifts to really get themselves going, albeit uh, Nielsen certainly doesn't seem to have any problem. And the Canadians had to travel. Let's remember that. So this game, I think, will pick up intensity and pace as it wears on. Yeah, the Canadians came in this morning. They landed at Farmingdale around 9.30 or so and were able to take their 11.30 morning skate. As Rollison goes fungo, didn't get as much as he wanted on it, so the Canadians keep it in. A little bit of a foul tip, wouldn't you say that? That's something like that. <laughs> Here's Weber, number 68. That's Yannick Weber getting some time right now on defense for the Canadians with a season-ending knee injury to Andre Markov. Weber, number 68, to Maxime Lapierre, who missed the net. The carom played by Darsh out to the front of the net, where it's swept away by Shrimp of the Islanders. And now Rob Shrimp slides it all the way down. This one's going to be an icing as Alexander Picard comes back to touch up. Closed captioning is brought to you by the New York Lottery. Get the feeling. Play Powerball from the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Now well, you're talking about Yannick Weber. He's from Switzerland, and his sort of his idol is, is Mark Streit. Tries to model himself after uh, after Mark, and we know what a terrific hockey player Streit is. Well, uh, Yannick is the uh, is the same style of player, about five feet eleven, great offensive skills, very solid defensively in his own end, and he's kind of taken the job away from uh, Subban. He's, he's been very very good since he's been called back up. Hey, speaking of Switzerland. Nino Niederreiter, who played early this year for the Islanders and then, of course, was sent back to his junior team, is playing for Team Switzerland in the World Juniors. He had an unassisted goal in the first period, picked up an assist 27 seconds later, and the Swiss, who led 4 to nothing, held on to defeat Germany 4 to 3. So, a nice game for young Mr. Niederreiter. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing him in an Islander uniform as early as next year. But uh, a lot of good Swiss hockey players, and they seem to be getting better and better every year. More guys making the NHL, making more of an impact. You must have a very good program over there. As we talked about, when you have a role model like Sprite, that's a good start for you. Funny how those things happen, huh? Mark Sprite wasn't playing much for the Canadians a couple of years ago. When the Islanders went on to sign him later that summer as a free agent, he's a defenseman by trade and played a good chunk of his time with the Canadians that last year, especially up front. Well, they didn't think he was very good defensively, and of course he came here and he proved that all wrong as he became a solid two-way player. One of the best power play quarterbacks in the National Hockey League. Wisniewski takes down Pacioretty after he dumps it in. Yaroslav Spachek, number six, puts it behind the net. Pacioretty working against James Wisniewski. And then Bailey, under pressure from Spacek, didn't clear the zone. 340 gone here in the opening period with no score. Wisniewski playing uh, a little smurf hockey as he was down on his knees making a little pass. Here's Scott Gomez into the Islanders zone. Gomez, number 11, forced out. Good job there by Wisniewski. And then the pass misses Brian Gianta. Wallison hands off to McDonald with Montreal beginning a change on the move. McDonald through center up for P.A. Parento. McDonald gets through. And now Hamannick throws one off the leg of Patchy already. And it's poked towards the line. Molson a good job to keep it in for the Islanders. And now Josh Georges, number 26, takes over for the Canadians. He turns it over, and Molson denied. Good play by Parento. And a penalty coming to the Canadians here. You can hear with that snowstorm outside and most Islander fans wisely deciding not to brave the elements. Those who came from Montreal are the ones making all the noise here. Now watch the pace that Parento, the Islanders have found their legs early. There's a good pace to this game. Parento, you'll see as we look at Scott Gomez being on the penalty box. But watch Parento as he, as he works hard and gets Chuck Sianto over here behind the net. And then makes a good pass to Molson, forces Price to make a big save. There's Matty Molson. There's a cross check by Gomez, not once but twice, but only one penalty called. 
So the Islanders to the power play. Gomez for cross checking at 429. Canadians have the second rank penalty killing unit in the National Hockey League. Yeah, and they're real good on the road, over 90%, so it isn't easy to score on them at any point in time. But when they get on the road, they play a very, very solid, very defensive style of game as far as killing penalties. And, and we talked about Price, how good he's been. Well, you know what? The best penalty killer most times is your goaltender. Here's Rob Camilleri, bumped by Hamannick, moved it across, and then spilled was Plakonitz. And the Canadians fans want a penalty. This is actually going to take some time to get used to because the dynamic is totally different than what we're used to. You see a player go down, and you think from an Islander perspective, well, okay, good, there's no penalty. But then you hear the groans from the fans, and it's all those Canadians fans who bust down, staring the snowstorm right in the face. Well, you're absolutely right. They're, they're making a lot of noise, and there's a lot of them here when you compare to the, uh, the Islander fans. Obviously, they're stuck here, the Canadian fans. They came in all yesterday, so they're here, and... Uh, they're here with the uh, with the storm and and they made the same trip last year Howie and they got the same kind of result there, or same uh, kind of welcoming we we welcomed them with a with a snowstorm but you're right anything that's going to happen that's going to be pro Canadian you're going to hear a lot of these fans and we're still looking at Tom Power excuse me at uh, Placanek being down and uh, Hamannick stood up on him trying to get a little hit there might not have been the best decision because it allowed Placanek to get in as he slides into the boards you can see him Winston a little bit. He seems to be all right. He's an awful good player. Once all Canadians cannot afford to lose him. McDonald's stick might have come up just a little bit, clipped him. But he'll be back. He's a hockey player. That's cliche already. Oh, I know, I know. But look, he's just got a fubu on the on the nose and the NBA is out of money. <laughs> well, you said that, I didn't. <laughs> Here's Wisniewski scrolling out of the Islanders zone. And now Tavares trying to get through. Backhands a save by Price, who stopped Tavares' rebound, too. Well, that was another great save by Price on Tavares, who broke through the middle. Parento couldn't get the tip. Molson backhanded it towards the net, but it didn't reach Price, and the Canadians clear. Islanders having some great opportunities on this uh, power play. They continue to work on it. That was a nice breakout play. Tavares having an opportunity to score. He also made a nice play with his leg to enable the Islander entry into the Canadian zone. And then Parento missed a pass to Tavares. Gianca read that jump right into the hole and leads Camilleri, who couldn't hold on. Good play by Gianca. Camilleri thought he was offside. I, I did, too. But the linesman didn't think so. Parento put it behind Tavares and Molson. So here come Gianca and Camilleri again. Into the Islander end. And Gianta put the hit from Wisniewski, and Molson sends McDonald out. Andrew McDonald up to the Montreal blue line. McDonald swings it back to Shrimp, but now Hamelik finds Spacek with a little curl feed, which enables a Montreal clear, as it's sent all the way down by Jeff Halpern. Veteran penalty killer, Deluxe, on time Washington Capital. 12 seconds left to the Islander power play. They've had three shots so far. Como trying to get through. He does. Circles the net and feeds the blue line to Hamannick. Now to McDonald. Penalty is over. Gomez out of the box. Hamannick tees it up. Shoots. A save by Price. He's a little wobbly at first. And then Halpern grabs it back and steers it around the board. Gomez has LaPierre breaking ahead. Didn't connect cleanly there. I'm not sure Price saw that puck to the last second. Hamannick with a good hard shot. Got it on net, but Price seemed to just pick it up very, very late as it got near the net. Rob Shrimp against Gill. Good move. Put it to the slot. Bounces away from Camilleri. Grabbed back by Bailey. He's squeezed to the boards by Big Hal Gill. And Georges helps the Canadians break out. Camilleri into the Islanders zone. Threw it off of Eaton's leg. Canadians hold it in. Bailey gets it back. Josh Bailey wants the red line. Gets the dump in. And the Islanders begin to change. A stitch in along the board. A wide feed. And then Gill bumps Martin. Gill back to his feet. And stitch in on the puck. Up the left wing comes Gomez. And over the line. Drops for Patchy already. Try to get it back to Gomez. But it went off of Yurchina. And is kept in now at the blue line by Picard, number 45, for Patchy already. Next, Patchy already draws a crowd. Gianta jumps on it in the corner. 
Brian Gianta put it out in front. Patchy already couldn't get a good shot off. Then he squeezed in by Urchina. Islanders about shot the Canadians early on. Five to four. Still no score. 11.57 to go. First period. Missed by Weber. But it'll be an icing unless Sim gets there first. He does not. The car touches up. And there will be a faceoff in the Islanders zone. You know, we mentioned how fans wisely chose to stay home. That's what the Islanders wanted, too. Just so you understand the dynamic here. The Islanders, according to a report on Newsday.com, wanted to postpone this game. The deputy Nassau County executive called Colin Campbell, who in concert with Gary Bettman denied that request. Now, there's been a league mandate for the last number of years that if both teams are here, they want them to play the game, regardless of how few fans might show up. And that's not always been the case. But as Weber fires, Rollison has it between the pads, and there's no further play. So the Islanders were hoping to get the postponement. But on we go. I can't believe I used to swing over those rocks. Took some foolish risks as a teenager. But I was still taking a foolish risk with my cholesterol. Anyone with high cholesterol may be at increased risk of heart attack. Diet and exercise weren't enough for me. I stopped kidding myself. I've been eating healthier, exercising more, and now I'm also taking Lipitor. If you've been kidding yourself about high cholesterol, stop. Along with diet, Lipitor has been shown to lower bad cholesterol 39 to 60%. Lipitor is FDA approved to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke in patients who have heart disease or risk factors for heart disease. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. You need simple blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor if you are taking other medications or if you have any muscle pain or weakness. This may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Let's go, wake up! <laughs> If you have high cholesterol, you may be at increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Don't kid yourself. Talk to your doctor about your risk and about Lipitor. Here you go. Every five minutes, Chase pays for someone's eligible credit or debit card purchase. Chase picks up the tab. It could be you. Chase picks up the tab. It's another great reason to bank with Chase. Chase what matters. Sign up at a branch today. Well, more good news for the Islanders as Rick DiPietro has come off of IR just as he suggested that he would. And so... Yeah, he said it was just uh, it was just minor, so that, uh, good for Rick and good for the Islanders. And we'll look forward to seeing him back in the nets because... We've talked about on a number of occasions. He really has his game going. Whether or not he'll play tomorrow uh, against the Rangers remains to be seen. But that's one of the reasons how, why this game is being played today because there was no day in between to find a place for the Canadians to play the Islanders again. So uh, the schedule is very hectic, as you know very well, with 82 games. So uh, teams are here. you got to play. Well, that's been the league's mandate for a number of years, pretty much since Gary Bettman took over back in 1993. And I can recall... In fact, early in calendar year 1993, the 92-93 season, being in Washington for a game, actually in Landover, Maryland, where the Washington Capitals used to play, both teams were there, but there was an ice storm, and the Capitals didn't want their fans traveling, and the game was postponed. But ever since then, the league has said, look, with 30 teams now, right. and travel considerations being what they are, if we've got both teams, if we've got the officials, then we're going to request that the teams play the game. And that's what happened today, even though the Islanders had asked for the postponement. But what the Islanders have done are a couple of nice things here. First off, those fans who are here are being, as you see, invited to come all the way down and watch the game from as far down as you want to go to the 100 level, if you'd like. And the Islanders, and we'll tell you more about this during the course of the game, and Rob Carlin will have more on it, are also telling any fan with a ticket to tonight's game that uh, it can be turned in for a future Islanders game beginning as soon as the next home game on Wednesday night against the Pittsburgh Penguins. A subject, of course, to availability. Which is a, a real nice thing to do. And for the loyal fans that are here tonight, that means they have two games. It makes me wonder if the Canadian fans will come back to get oh. that extra game. <laughs> Howie? That's a good point by you. <laughs> Nielsen flings <laughs> one up high, and it's stopped by Price. Now, of course, Canadians don't come back in here this year. They've already been here once before, and this is their final 
trip to Long Island. Well, perhaps Charles will allow him to come next year. Who knows? <laughs> He's in a giving mood. It's the Christmas spirit. It's the holiday season. Exactly. And Josh Bailey doesn't get exactly a Merry Christmas card there from Pacioretty. 9.49 to go in the scoreless first period. Well, it's gotten to be a little bit more close checking by both clubs. It was a little bit wide open at the start with good pace to it. It slowed down just a little. Yeah, you coaches don't like pace. You don't like, well, it gets wide open. Too many scoring chances. Okay if you're on the good side of it, but uh, you don't like to be on the bad side. Yeah, too much fun. Who wants that? <laughs> coaches. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you don't want to play in your own end. You want to play in the offensive zone. That's just where all the money is, and it's a lot more fun. LaPierre checked by Eaton. Centering feed, and that shot by Picard was knocked aside, perhaps by Rollison. It was traffic moving in front of him. Another shot that got through and was stopped by Rollison. That one tipped over the net, and the Canadians getting pressure on this shift. But Shrimp comes up left wing with Como. Nice feed. Here comes Como. He's in. He scores! What a play from Shrimp to Como. And the Islanders lead it one to nothing. Well, we watched a little bit of a flurry by the Montreal. Turned it up the ice in a hurry with good speed as he watch watch his play come around. Rob Shrimp gets it by Marlton go down the wing. A great pass to Como cutting through the middle. And watch this forehand move. And he goes five hole. This is a good pass through the middle. Como showing some speed. And he gets it in a five hole. So Blake Como picks up his eighth of the year. Rob Shrimp's game continues to get better and better. Well, you heard the coach talk about Rob Shrimp, someone who has a lot of skills, you know, is a great passer, has a great shot, you know, needs to work on his battle aspect of his game, his defensive play, but uh, certainly offensively, you know, former first rounder, he has a lot of skill. That was a good pass, good chemistry between those two guys. And back up comes Grabner for the Islanders. Hillen jumping in. Pass doesn't reach him. It's broken up by Lars Eller in number 81. And up the right wing now for the Canadians comes Benoit Pouliot. He's checked by Hillen. Pouliot was a healthy scratch in the Canadians' last game. That wasn't just Hillen jumping in. That was also Yuchina. It was a three against two with two defensemen. You don't see that very often. A steal by Tavares from Hamelik. Tavares has it chopped away from behind by Camilleri. Tavares stays with it. Tavares, good job protecting the puck. Cycles down, intended for McDonald. That's broken up. Comes back to Molson, but his backhander dribbles wide. Now Hamanek at the line. Puts it off of Camilleri. And Rob Camilleri works it out to center. Laconitz shaken up earlier, back into the zone. Goes off of Hamanek. And the Islanders have good support there. Kostichin wrestles with Parato, takes him down, and there's going to be a penalty to Kostichin. Uh, so the Islanders one -on -one get a battle there. Yeah, real good one-on-one -on -one battle with uh, with Parento and Kostichin. You know, early on in the season, we didn't see that one-on-one -on -one battle, that tenacity. Parento stays with him and forces him to pull him down. So a delayed penalty. Rollison has gone to the bench. Islanders have an extra skater on. Shrimp brings it in. Let the pass picked off by Georgia, so we get the whistle. So Blake Como with his eighth of the year from Shrimp and Eaton at 11.04 as the Islanders in front. Power play for New York next. The gauntlet has been thrown down, Islanders. Monday, the Isles and Rangers reignite their classic rivalry. Then Wednesday, the Isles welcome the Penguins with open arms and closed fists. Islanders Hockey this week on MSG Plus. Mod, oh, no. I like that sweatshirt, by the way. Is that a sweater or a sweatshirt? It's kind of a sweater. Is that velvet velour? It was like a cotton. Little... Can I buy online? Uh, yes, you can. I, no, yeah, I think I'm going to get that exact sweatshirt today. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that right no, now. No, no, no. Boomer and Carton. Mornings on MSG. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. There are times when you can get a brand new Elantra for a song. But since it's the holidays, let's call it a carol. During our Hyundai Holidays event, lease the Hyundai Elantra for $159 a month or get special financing plus $2,500 bonus cash. Our breakout session is going to be great. Got the Gecko t-shirt, 4 million drivers switched. 
Gecko water bottle, notebook, chamois. Sir, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with all, you know, all this. I mean, it's not about me. It should it be about how Geico's the third largest car insurance company in the nation? Things like that. Oh, of course. We're not going to get carried away. Uh, yeah, all right. As long as we don't overdo it. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Islanders lead 1-0 and have a chance to extend it to 2. Watch P.A. Parental battle with Kostitsin for that puck. Hangs on to it. Kostitsin takes him down with a trip. Islanders will go on their power play. Look at a good second effort by Parento, staying with it. And with that goal, Como is now the Islander team leader in points with 20. Tavares and Wisniewski have 19. Islanders second power play. They had three shots on their first without scoring. So hook on Kostichin at 12.49. Now Halpern excused from the draw. And so Quiet takes it instead against Tavares and sends Halpern on his way. Halpern surrounded as he brings it into the Islanders zone. And Franz Nielsen takes over. So Nielsen and Wisniewski are the point men in the Tavares Molson Parento line. They'll play up front to start this power play. Nielsen, sort of a ragged entry into the Montreal zone. So Gill able to find the loose puck and fire it out to center. Nielsen right back in. Tavares had it slapped away. And the Islanders need to regroup. Tavares had to wait an instant for Molson to get out, and that gave the Canadians time to work it ahead. Plakonitz, short-handed, nice feed to Camilleri, back to Plakonitz, up high, and a save by Rolison. That might have got him on his mask. Yeah, real good save by Rolison. Islanders very care careless on this power play. You know how, as you mentioned, coming up the ice real slow, real loose around the blue line. That's uh, dangerous hockey. They gave up an awful good opportunity to Camilleri. Good save by Molson. Now Shrimp in over the Canadians' line. Curls it back. Kamenek just did keep that at the line. Bailey with a little room. Feed Shrimp. Quick shot over the glove of Price and ultimately over the glass and out of play with 45 seconds remaining on the Islander power play. Well, the Montreal Canadiens get a short hard an opportunity. Watch this give and go back to Placanic. Tries to go short high, side high. Rolson holds his position. And then Bailey with a quick pass to Shrimp. He tries to go high glove side. And again, Price makes that save. To me, Howie, Price doesn't look very sharp. I mean, I know he's had a real good season so far to this point in time. But tonight, to, for me, he doesn't look like he's right on his game. I'd try and get some more shots on this guy, particularly on the ice. You mean low shots as opposed to shots from the stands? <laughs> yeah, that's true enough. McDonald back to play it behind the Islander net. Half minute remaining to the power play. You mean literally, not figuratively. Yeah, well, well you're you know, saying? I'm a literal person. Okay. Islanders go offside with 25 seconds left of the power play. Weekday mornings from 6 to 10. New York's favorite sports morning show is on MSG. Wake up with Boomer and Carton presented by Allstate. Weekday mornings live on MSG Network. Be back on Monday, right? That's yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Or will it be January 3rd? I think they're back tomorrow. I'm not even sure. Because either way, you get to see them. Either with the best of or a brand new show. I'm not expecting you to know. I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, I was. Did you want an answer? <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid you'd take it literally. Gill, oh, where's it into the This is the crash line. This is the crash and burn line for hopefully for the uh, bunch of Canadians is Kanapka, Simon, and Martin. So if they don't hit you to death, they're going to talk you to death. Penalty winding down as Gill sends it all the way down. And here comes Kostichin out of the box. One shot for the Islanders on that power play. They're now 0 for 2. And it's a loquacious bunch to be sure. None more so than the man in the middle, Kanapka. That was behind Martin, and that's why the play goes offside. So, 4.56 remaining first period here at the Coliseum. Islanders on a Como goal are in front. That's your forecast, New York. Stay tuned for sports. Whew. Predicting the weather can be tricky. You should always be prepared. That's why I like my plan from Emblem Health. I can choose from doctors across the entire region, and they have great programs and discounts to help me stay healthy. Now that's a sunny outlook, folks. Finally, an accurate forecast. Welcome back 
just four competitors left standing. Uh, they're going to have to dig deep here. It's gut check time, Doug. Timberland Pro's gaining ground. Look at that power. He never slips. The best guys really turn it on down the stretch. Now these two just don't like each other. Going for gold. Do or die, 950 pounds. Determination is the key here. Steel toe doesn't hurt either, Bob. He did it! Unbelievable! Stayed on his feet all day long. The endurance boot with anti-fatigue technology. Only from Timberland Pro. Open up a Cadillac during our season's best sales event and receive the gift of asphalt. Experience the Cadillac of crossovers, the striking SRX. It's the one gift you can open up all year long. Visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealer or CadillacTriState.com for this attractive offer. The season's best sales event from Cadillac. But when you get uh, veteran guys like Mark and Milan and Radic, uh, they come back. You know, they're a lot more poised back there. They're, you know, they're a lot more patient, and, and they may they'll make a, a play that you're just like, oh wow, geez, where'd that play come from? And, and we're getting out of our, our zone a little bit cleaner, so we're playing less time in our, in our zone, which gives us more offensive time. And, uh, and obviously, when you get more offensive time, pucks start going in. There. Dwayne Rollison with the Islanders quote book and they're still missing Martinek, but the rest of them have done just fine. Boy, then he said it very, very well. I mean, when you have that experience back there, they're going to get you out of your zone much quicker, much cleaner. And, and he's absolutely right about that. When you spend less time in your own zone, it means you're in another zone, Howie, and that's good offensive opportunities. And that's something that the Islanders have done more of since those vets have been back. Now Matt Martin up for Nielsen. Martin, nice little give and go. Grabner, quick shot, price the save. Martin right in front, gave him a little shower. The Connets took some exception to that, but nothing more develops. Well, as we've seen the Jack Capuano era sort of begin, you know, we see the subtle little changes in this hockey club, and one of them for me is the, the center drive, you know, where the wingers are staying more on the wings, and the, and the centerman is driving to the net, or whoever happens to be in that middle area, and it's uh, creating a lot more offense for the, uh, for the Islanders. Uh, like I keep saying, it's more traditional.